Welcome. In a previous video, I set up QSync Central on a QNAP NAS, and then I did some videos on setting the client up on a Mac, Windows, and Ubuntu. And if you want to find those videos, I'll put a link in the description of my QNAP playlist. And I'll also put a link to the QNAP hardware I'm using. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at QSync Lite on an iPad. So I'm running on an iPad Pro first gen, and I have QSync Lite here in the App Store, and I'll just hit the download button. I've already downloaded it previously, um, otherwise you'll see get here, it's the same thing. Now I'll hit open. And we have a little presentation here, it says manage files with ease. It says sync a mobile folder to the NAS. It says offline file support and manage team folders. And I'll hit start in the lower right. It's asking us for a region. So it has global and China. I'll do global. I'll hit done here. It searches for your QNAP NAS. You can also hit the plus at the bottom to add it separately. I'll tap on that. It's going to ask for a username and password. We can enable SSL login, so I'll turn that on. I'll hit advanced settings just so you can see what we have here. There's a nickname at the top, and then down below we have detect port automatically and you can change the port there if you have a custom port. So I'll go back to basic settings and I'll hit save in the upper right. It's connecting. It says the SSL connection is not certified and that's because I'm using a self-signed certificate so I'll confirm that. If you've uh, installed like a Let's Encrypt certificate or you bought one, um, you want to heed that warning there. So it says manage paired folder so I'll just select QSync for right now. I'll hit done. And now we're in the interface. So you see on the left side here, it lists my NAS, and then I have the QSync folder under it. So under there, I have things I've uploaded to the QSync folder. So we can open those items. So I'll photo here. I can swipe to other photos. I have a pair of boots <laughs> and a lake. I can open up text files. And I can open up folders. Then we have a search option here. You can enter a keyword, you can search on location, size, type, modified date, or owner group. And then you can change from thumbnail to detail view. And then we have the three dots up here. It has upload, select, add new folder, sort order, and refresh. So I can go to upload here. I'll just say from camera. It says it wants to access my camera. I'll take a picture of the table. <laughs> it said it would like to access my photos now, so I'll hit OK. I'll hit OK again. There's so much security in these modern systems. And here it says completed task. So if I hit the three dots next to it, we can delete it or look at info. If I hit the three dots at the top, it says start incomplete tasks, overwrite all skip tasks, stop all incomplete tasks, remove all tasks, and remove all completed tasks. So we're just taking a photo. If you were doing something more complicated, you may need to use those other options. So here's the image of the desk. It has the thumbnail in there now. So next I'll click on the offline section here, and this allows you to bring items from the QSync folder to your tablet, download them so you can use them offline. So if I go back to QSync, I can say take a picture of these boots, I'll hit the three dots on the right, and I'll say offline. And that says completed task. So you'll see this like completed tasks one. This is one uh, you know photo, it was very fast. If you had a thousand photos, it would probably take a while, and we'll see where that shows up in a minute. So if I go to offline now, you can see I have the boot on my device, okay? And then on the left we have team folder manager, and that's for team folders. I haven't done any videos on that yet. We have sharing links. So if you create any links to share that file, uh, they would show up here. Then we have background tasks. So if you're downloading, say, a thousand photos, you would see the status of it here. And then we have settings, and this allows you to sign in with your QNAP ID. You can change your download folder size. So I have it at 500 megabytes, but you can do one gig, two gig, five gig are unlimited. And then we have automatic sync. It says when active, QSync iOS Lite automatically synchronizes mobile and offline folders while charging and connected to Wi-Fi. So if I tap on that, what you see, we have close, five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, and two hours. And then down below we have mobile folder sync. And it says synchronize a mobile folder with your NAS QSync folder. So I'll hit set now. I'll select the NAS, I'll confirm. So now it's going to sync the home.qsync mobile folder with my iPad. 
And I'll show you that in just a second. And then we have manage paired folders. So if you tap that, this is what we saw during the initial setup. Then down below we have cache. We can clear that, we can do auto login. Uh, browsing photo, we have thumbnail size or original size. Uh, show hidden files and then that region. Then we have duplicate file name policy for uploads is overwrite. And there's a bunch of options there. I'll show you those. No, that's just skip. Uh, the next one down here we have more. Um, then you have Wi-Fi only on upload and download policy. I'll turn that on, although this isn't a cellular device, so it doesn't really matter. Preferences says these settings are configured on the connected NAS at QSync Central Management Settings. So I'll hit that, and this shows the different policies here. So NAS mode is user customization mode. Conflict policy is let me decide for each file. So if we hit that, there's a bunch of options here. And then you have the central configuration mode. It says conflict policy is let me decide for each file. So if you don't set a different one, this is what you're gonna be using. And then in the bottom it says use conflict policy of central configuration mode on client side. And that's grayed out. So I'll hit back here. Let's take a quick look at feedback. So we have feedback, contact support, introduction, requirements, disclaimer, and then there's this contact support. And if you hit that, it will send you right into the support. So I'll go back up here to the QSync folder, and you'll see I hit that uh, thing, and it created this mobile folder. So this was already here uh, because I was testing it earlier, but anything I put into this folder will now sync with this device. So I just moved a file in there on my computer, and any second now it should sync up. I may need to refresh it. And you can just drag down to refresh it. There we go. I went back on my computer and for some reason it wasn't in there. I must have dragged it to a different folder. So same picture I had earlier, I just renamed it. So say you're working on daily projects and you want to have that automatically sync up to your iPad, you can store them in that folder and you don't have to worry about moving them over or sending them offline or anything. So QSync Lite for the iPad works a little different from the desktop clients in that it doesn't automatically sync everything. You actually have to define things you want to sync. I think the reason they do that is because most people probably aren't going to want to sync like 200 gigabytes of files to their iPad, whereas it might not be a big deal on their desktop computer. So then when you're done, you can hit at the upper left, you can see there, you can hit the little exit button and log out of here. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.